Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is having a beautiful, beautiful weekend, relaxing, uh, all that good stuff. Hope everybody had a really good trading week, uh, really, really strong week, uh, especially Friday. We'll talk about uh, the individual pivots in, in a few minutes. So I, I, I really wish everybody, uh, everybody's watching this broadcast Nothing but love and health. That's it. Nothing but love and health. The whole, you know, chasing for prosperity. It's great. If you get there, that's wonderful. But again, as long as you have your loved ones with you and you're able to make somebody smile, that's what life is worth living for. Again, I don't know about everybody's individual goals and wants and needs in life. But again, if you break down life into the most simplistic forms, right, of enjoyment, it's really easy to be happy. Problem is, most people don't know how to be happy because they always want the things they can't get instead of appreciate the things that they already have. And, you know, kind of a segue into the trading aspect of it is, you know, I, and I've said this before because I see a lot of traders, especially new traders, that I interact with like stock tweets and Twitter. And, you know, people are very, very unhappy. And, you know, and, and they always put, so much pressure on themselves to figure out this whole trading thing, right? Uh, it has to happen now or I'm a failure. It has to happen within a year or I'm a failure. If it doesn't happen in two years, I'm the worst trader in the world. Number one, and, and again, I'm, I'm directing this to, to the new traders, okay? If you haven't thought about quitting trading at least 50 times within the first two years, you're not normal, okay? You're not normal, you're not human, um, and you are from a different world, okay? Anything that you're going through, okay? If you're a trader, you've been trading a year, two years, even three years, okay? Anything you're going through, okay? Every single trader on the planet has been professionally trading for a long period of time now will give you a pretty much exact replica of what you're going through plus another hundred things that made their journey exceptional for their own specific path, okay? The sleepless nights, the self-doubts, okay? Uh, the depression. Depression is a very, very big key that I went through uh, 2001 to 2003. For, you, for those of you guys who don't know what happened in 2001 and 2003, I was coming off a pretty good run during the internet craze. And, and again, I've never, I've never hid this from anybody. And I think most of my trading buddies will say the same thing. We were products of the internet craze. We were, okay? Uh, nobody knew how to trade. We got very, very lucky. And that bought us time to kind of figure things out, okay? So after 9-11, um, when unfortunately we had the most horrific terrorist attack in the history uh, of the world, I didn't make a penny from 2001 to 2003. Not a penny, okay? I was trading for a hedge fund in South Florida and if you ever meet this person who owned the, owned the fund, they would tell you they would absolutely, hands down, okay, that, that there wasn't even a debatable discussion. There wasn't another human being on the planet that potentially could have been a worse, most horrific trader than I was, okay? Uh, I was trying to go through the motions that I had some success with during the internet craze, but the problem was after 9-11, because of more significant terroristic threats. The world changed, okay? You couldn't buy stock because you were afraid there was another attack that was imminent, okay? You couldn't short stock because any minute they were gonna find Osama bin Laden, they were gonna find everybody responsible for the horrific attacks, and you were gonna have a 2,000 point rally that was gonna completely knock you out. And, and, I, and I've said this year after year, there was nothing during that time, at least for me, okay? that I could have done to make money. I was a former shell of myself. I was going through depression. My favorite part of, uh, the, my favorite part of the day was going to sleep. My marriage was slowly getting worse and worse, okay? D depleting, my funds were getting depleted. 
And I, I had to come to the point of that I'm either going to figure this out or I'm not. And again, fast forward to 2003, um, Taser came into the world. If all you guys remember Taser, Taser was the first, kind of the first glance of what we saw during the internet craze, a stock that basically closed well, gapped up, closed well, gapped up. And if you look at Taser's chart, and I think the new symbol is AAOI. We were just talking about this in the live webinar on Friday. From 2003 to like 2005, it was like the best thing ever. I just kept on gapping up every single night. And then there was another company called Boom, which actually, I actually like this on our watch list uh, for tonight. That kind of made me think about this. There was actually another company, Boom. Okay, if you look at the weekly charts, uh, actually, if you look, yeah, if you look at the weekly, actually the monthly chart on Boom, you'll notice that it was a massive runner. I mean, massive, massive runner for like 2005. Uh, for a couple of years. So those two stocks were basically the saving point of my career. Okay, it was really the saving point of my career. And from that time, it kind of bought me time to kind of have that aha moment, to kind of have slowly but surely things to, to really embrace, embrace information, start appreciating charts, start appreciating technical analysis. And, and slowly but surely, it got me to the world of small caps, which at that point, nobody was really trading, okay? And I stopped trading small caps around 2012. I used to swing small cap stocks because all these, all these, I, I don't want to say, but all these kids were coming in with 1,000 and 2,000, 3,000 people, quote unquote, chat room. And they used to destroy really, really great setups. The stocks would go up, you know, five, seven cents artificially, and then it crashed down 20, 25 cents. And then when you're swinging a book, you can't really hold on to that. So eventually I had to come to another crossroad in my career to figure out that this doesn't work and I had to find something else. And at that point, I started developing, looking at millions of charts, literally millions of charts, and I found the common denominator, which slowly, surely became uh, what we know in front of us are the pivots. And that's kind of what I've been trading for the last seven years. So if you're a new trader right now, okay, and I know we've been covering this over and over again, for weeks. And you know, you could be trading three, four, five years, but again, you're you know consistently consuming bad information. You're you're self-sabotaging yourself. It's just it's just the reality. At least back then, right? At least back then when we were trading on, you know, we was all sitting on a trading desk, whether it was uh, generic, uh, when it was spectrum, Schoenfeld, all, all these trading desks, whatever trading desk you were on, at least you had that intimate one-on-one -on -one relationship with guys that potentially could be really good assets for your development. Now, unfortunately, you have so much information, but 99% of the information is completely irrelevant. It's completely irrelevant. It's, it's, it's almost downright stupid. And most traders are putting themselves in a situation that you have to dig through really a ton of septic tanks to really find you know that one you know, one little acorn of gold, that one little acorn of piece of good information that you could build your trading career. And the most amazing part, the most ironic part is now we're in a world of so much fast information compared to back then when I started, which we basically, the only information came from the person to the left or to the right of you. But right now it's actually more difficult because everything on social media is being sensationalized to the point of, and it's making you feel that if you don't develop as a professional trader in social media's eyes in the first three to six months, you're a complete failure. And we keep on seeing over and over again, traders just email me nonstop. I have nothing to do with the, with the daily webinar. I have nothing to do with any correspondence that I have on a daily basis talking about, I can't take it anymore. Okay. I don't know how much more I can, I can do. And, and the one thing that I will tell you is it's going to sound harsh. Okay. It's really going to sound harsh, but in a weird way, nobody cares. Okay, in a weird way, nobody cares because every single trader has gone through what you've gone through. Okay, every single trader, and we're still going through it. I, I just literally tweeted a couple hours ago that I'm a flawed trader just like everybody else. I have my self doubts, okay, not all the time, but I have my self doubts. Um, I do make emotional mistakes, okay, I am subconsciously afraid. Okay. You can, you, you, again, you could talk, talk all you want. The most, the biggest, right. The biggest, the most aggressive al alpha male, alpha female. Okay. 
will always have a soft spot in their subconscious that will have a self-doubt. Because again, we're all human beings. We all bleed the same. We all cry the same. We all laugh the same. So we all go through the same cycles as developing traders. And the one thing that no developing trader wants to admit is that whatever they're doing is wrong. Okay, They could be doing the same thing over and over again. Two, three, four, five years, not getting any results. Literally in the same position as they were when they started but they do not want to admit themselves and you know they will not look themselves in the mirror and say to themselves well maybe there's a better way right maybe there's a better way they're they're so ego driven they're so stubborn they're so afraid of the unknown okay they so lack of complete guidance that they refuse to ask help they refuse to ask help and slowly but surely okay their process or lack thereof is going to deplete your funds it's going to deplete your mental equity, okay? And eventually, it's going to brush you out the door and make you a statistic. And I want you guys to understand this. And again, I'm specifically trade, uh, talking to the new trader, okay? There's nothing that you're going through that we haven't gone through, okay? Any trader that you respect, look up to, converse, have any type of relationship with, whether it's in the virtual world or it's in the real world, every single trader has walked the fire, walked through the fire, have put their feet through the fire, have pissed blood, okay, have thought about quitting 50 times a year, okay, 50 times a year, 50 times a day, 50 times a month. But the most important part and the difference between, right, the difference between uh, a new trader and somebody else, you got to fight through it, okay. Again, th this business is relentless. This business is absolutely relentless. It wants to detach you from your money. It wants to make you a statistic. The only way you, you can fight through this, number one, you have to be mentally tough. You have to be mentally tough and you have to take whatever way you're trading, whatever strategy you have, whatever press process you have, you, you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, just, it's just not working. It's just not working. I have to give myself every chance in the world to succeed. But if I'm trading, if I continue to trade in a fashion, in a fashion that I can't make money, right? Don't you owe it to yourself, right? Don't you really owe it to yourself to figure out a way that there's another way, right? There's an actually another way that you can possibly succeed. Again, Baskin Robbins has 31 flavors. You might not like chocolate. You might not like vanilla. Hell, you might not like rainbow sprinklers. There's something out there that eventually you're going to like that you're going to be comfortable with. The only question is, are you going to let the market defeat you mentally? Okay, it's okay. Okay, it's okay to lose. Okay, it's okay to lose. The question is, are you going to let the market mentally defeat you? Are you going to let your mental equity burn out before the light bulb goes on? And again, the easiest thing to do in this, in this world, in this business, is the easiest thing is to get into this business. The easiest thing is to quit this business. And the hardest thing to do is to get back in. Because again, you have so many mental scars subconsciously that you're afraid to continue to do the same things and you will never make that second leap uh, into trading. So new traders, I know it's hard. It's the toughest business in the world. And anybody who's been trading, forget about the 20 that I'm in, anybody who's been trading for at least seven to 10 years, they will tell you, okay? They will tell you that their really big moment of clarity came in after year six, after year seven, after year eight, okay? This isn't, you know, this isn't social media. You gotta get the social media mentality out of your heads that you can trade from anywhere in the world with stupid Wi-Fi connection on a beach, sipping a drink. No, you can't, okay? Enough with these stories. No, you can't. No professional trader does that. Nobody takes seriously in the world does that. Social media, yes. Phenomenal. A million, a million 22-year-old kids are all on the beach. You guys are fantastic. Fantastic, and I wish you the best. But what you're doing is not trading, okay? What you're, what you're doing is not trading. You're, you're, all you're doing is putting extra pressure on legitimate people who want to, you know, who want to trade for a living. Again, whether they'll succeed or whether they fail, you have to give them at least a lifeline to try properly. And again, this is the time. If you're trading two, three, four years and you're not getting anywhere, guys, it has to be the time for self-reflection. Again, how much longer can you continuously do the same thing, right, over and over again? and try to get ex different results. It just doesn't make sense. So I'm hoping you guys just really listen to me. Don't put out of pressure. Everybody develops um, at a different stage in their career. I know if you have a, a magical moment of clarity and develop in the first year, fantastic. 
If you're developing year three, fantastic, but at least do everything possible, whether it's charting, reading, whatever it is, whatever it possibly needs to take to put yourself in a situation and buy yourself time before your, you know, before your hourglass, before your lifeline, before your, your chips get depleted and all your mental equity gone. So I wish you guys an incredible amount of joy and love and luck in your trading journey. But at some point, you have to be, you have to take control of your actions and make sure that you are in control of what you're doing. So let's talk about the market. Again, nothing materialistically has changed. Uh, again, the market, the market's just gonna grind to Labor Day. It's just gonna grind to Labor Day. Uh, there is absolutely no selling pressure unless we get a materialistic missile, nuclear war, God knows, you know, something, God forbid. Unless we get something, God forbid, materialistic news, we're going to grind up. We've been saying this for week after week after week. There is no selling pressure because there's nobody around. There's no new materialistic facts. They're going to wake people up from their vacation in the Hamptons, in the shore, or anywhere, right? Anywhere in the world and say, oh my God, I have to sell my stock. Sellers are comfortable at these levels. Buyers are on vacation. Most of the days you are going to get modest to tight ranges. Friday was a complete freak show. We'll talk about this, uh, what happened Friday, one of, the, one of the really most aggressive trading days uh, of the year, which was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, but the most important part is you can't put yourself in a position to try to trick the market if you feel the market is overbought. There's no such thing as overbought. Okay, We're at all-time highs. Uh, we're probably going to grind to Labor Day. It's just the reality. Um, and when people start really flowing back through vacation, right, from vacation because school starts in September, especially for the people on the East Coast, then you're probably going to see the true nature uh, of the market. Until then, you know, don't make macro opinions. Just It's just not worth it. You know, if you all you guys who believe that the market should go to zero, right, just trade what's in front of you. Individual setups are the key. Your process is your lifeline. You don't need to guess. You don't need to be intelligent. You don't need to be smart. You just can't be the dumbest person on the planet. You can't be the, again, you don't need to be the best trader in the world. You just can't be the absolute worst. So uh, again, all time highs, uh, China on, China off. Again, nobody cares. Jobs good, jobs bad, nobody cares, right? Nobody cares, nobody cares. We are grinding higher. So. Make sure, and especially in a market like this, and I, I say this every single day in the live webinar, when you have a, a grinding market like this, okay, and there's aggressive buying every single day, every single day. It might not be in the whole macro market, but you'll see stocks over and over again have massive, massive moves like BYND. You know, BYND was just, just absolutely phenomenal. Just absolutely phenomenal for you guys uh, who just join us you know, once a week here. <laughs> We've been in this damn thing from the 50, 55 area all the way to 75 for literally the whole week, literally the whole week. And then Friday was a, 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 a beautiful, a beautiful, beautiful short, not a huge move, but a beautiful short uh, to the downside. But again, when you have aggressive buyers like this and more shorts and more shorts start to develop and this thing, and again, I said this every single week, this BYND, when this thing finally becomes shortable, like really, really shortable, I know it's very, very tough to borrow shares. I know IB had shares in a few other places, but when, when this thing becomes shortable and more shorts are trapped, this thing, uh, mark my words, I, I could be off. But this thing will be the second coming of Tesla. I'm telling you, I hated stock, right? I hated stock. It's going to go to zero. It's going to go to 200. This will be at least potentially will be the next Tesla. This will potentially be the next uh, Tesla trading vehicle. Again, these stocks do not come once a year. They, they, when they come, they come for, for, for a really good two, three year run. And this potentially could be uh, one of them. So, you know, again, nothing really to talk about macro wise. Like my mom said, no news is good news. Let's talk about Friday, okay? Let's talk about Friday. Um, again, folks, for all you guys in the live Twitter feed or in the stock Twitch feed, again, you guys will know. I mean, there, there is no, you know, there is no cherry picking. When well, you guys see me tweet, this is it. I mean, these are the pivots. They're, you know, we don't remove pivots. You know, we have we have two hundred what two hundred fifty two hundred fifty on the on the Twitter feed. Uh, you know, another seventy five in the stock Twitch feed. And these guys will tell you, there's nobody. We don't ch uh, cherry pick these things. These are the pivots. And Friday was probably, if, if what I remember, probably one of the most aggressive sessions we saw in beta for a very, very long time. Expansion channels, aggressive channels, aggressive volume, very little hiccups, okay? Just an incredibly aggressive day. And for all you guys who caught this day, congratulations. If you're a new trader and you hesitated uh, and you miss these things, it's normal, okay? It's normal. Remember, 
your brain cannot automatically adjust to how fast and aggressive the price action is when money is on the line. Okay, that's why the whole theory of paper trading is irrelevant. Okay, it's completely irrelevant, is a complete waste of time. When you're a brand new trader, you cannot, and I repeat this, you cannot convince yourself, or your mind doesn't work that fast, that if you're seeing Tesla go from 341, 342, 343, you're mentally not used to the price action. You're mentally used to, well, you buy Intel at whatever the price it is, it sits in a three cent range, 10 cent range for three, four hours. These stocks are aggressive for a reason. The arbitrage comes in, the volume kicks in for a reason. There are points of interest that we call the pivots, or at least especially way uh, that, that I've created this process, that once they get confirmed, there's an arbitrage there. You guys see it, I mean, especially you guys on the Twitter feed, you guys see this really, really quickly. Obviously, people in the live webinar have seen this every single day. But once these things trigger and they confirm the proper way, you know, they're rocket launchers. So if you, if you are a newer trader, again, it's going to take time. You have to let your brain catch up to the price action and over time, and that's what, you know, that's what trading is, it's buying time. Over time, everything will start slowing down, the game slows down, and next thing you know, it really starts to click in a nice way. So let's talk about the pivots, right guys? So I was literally in Netflix short and Tesla long at the same time. And, and I'm telling you, as the day is long, I probably lost five years of my life. For all you guys who know, especially trading prior to 10 o'clock, these things are so aggressive, okay, that you are burning so much mental equity at one time that it's almost overbearing. And I was literally short Netflix and long Tesla at the same time, and I needed to see two results. And for all you guys in the live webinar, for the, for the five, seven minutes before I made my first sales on Tesla, I made my first cover on Netflix, I was sitting there literally, if, if I soiled all over myself, it would probably be the truth. I literally sat there, my brain froze, and I literally sat there numb because it take, does take so much effort to really you know, trade these things properly. But when you have two on at the same time in two different directions, it's absolutely overwhelming. So let's talk about the pivots. Uh, Netflix every single day has been rejected, the 385, 385, 385. And we talked about this, that 377.40, 377 for aggressive downside, earnings next week for just the trade. And here is the pivot. You know, here is the pivot on Netflix. Uh, here is the 7740, right? Here is the 7740 right here. And once it broke it, it went down to 76, went down to 76. It spiked back up, you know, roughly to about 66 and change. And once it confirmed the 66, went all the way down uh, to 372 and change. Just really, really good trade. Uh, I was pretty happy about it. NVIDIA, I missed NVIDIA because, again, I was in, I, literally, I missed NVIDIA and Boeing because I was in, in uh, Tesla and Netflix. So NVIDIA, you know, here is NVIDIA, 168 needs to build, right? Here's the 68, right? 168 needs to build, just absolutely exploded, went to 70 and a half. Uh, Boeing, okay, Boeing, 160 needs to build for flow. Here was Boeing, here was a 60-minute view on Boeing, right? Here's why we say 160. This whole channel right here was 160, right? Oh, excuse me, 360, 359, 58, 359, 70. So 360 build on Boeing and just Boeing went nuts. You know, Boeing went absolutely nuts, uh, went all the way up to 366 and change. Uh, here was Tesla. Uh, I got long. Uh, I got long at 42. My highest sale was 43, 43.60s before the stock came in. And then later the stock ran to like 45. Uh, ZM, uh, ZM, I mean, just, just a big move. ZM needs to reclaim 93. It got upgraded. Uh, if, no, 9350 is a little bit of a supply, so it really needs to get above that 93 to establish a strong base. And ZM, again, here is ZM. Here is the 93, right? Here's a sneaky pivot 93. Here was the 9350, and the stock went to about 95. Again, good job for all you guys who caught that as well. Uh, BYND, again, we talked about it on the way up. And BYND, I didn't have a locate for this thing. Uh, so if all you guys did, congratulations. Again, not the biggest trade in the world, but I said, look, there's measure potential 164, 165. Not every single trade needs to be this marvelous, majestic, you know, movie event. Sometimes just good cash flow. Uh, 67, if it builds below, it can flush. Here was BYND, right? Here was BYND right here is a 60, oh, excuse me. Here was a 67 right here, right? 167 is low here, 167 is low here. Once it start building below 67, da, 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 da. 
went down to 64.75, again, 64.75, uh, measured potential. And Amazon didn't confirm, but I, I like Amazon, okay? Amazon, I think Prime starts, Prime Day starts on the 15th, okay? It starts on the 15th. Here's two levels, and I, I want to kind of start off giving you guys some ideas to watch uh, for Monday. Here's some, you know, here's where I think the stock needs to, to, to reclaim to wake up. If we get a down open in Amazon, this 217 area, I think it needs to build. And, and let me show you guys why. So here's Amazon, right? Here's Amazon. Okay, this is the highest candle into supply. This is what we call uh, the sneaky pivot. And for all you guys who are obviously in the live webinar or on the Twitter feed, understand what a sneaky pivot is, because again, you watch the four hour workshop. Um, but here, if you guys see the top of this channel here is 217, and this is now higher than this lowest Bollinger Band that's coming up, which is supply. And again, if you believe in the theory, stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, if Amazon starts reclaiming 217, you do have room all the way up to the 240 level. There's nothing in between 217 and 240 uh, that will give it any type of resistance. So if, keep an eye on you guys, for all you guys who are trading on Amazon, watch the build. Uh, 217, 218 for the next leg up. Um, I like Tesla. I think Tesla goes higher. Um, again, it finally broke. It finally broke above uh, the pre-market uh, high or after market high of Tesla on that PR with the whole delivery. Uh, any build over 245 is bullish. Uh, if you look at the daily chart, uh, yeah, it potentially could get to like 248, 250. And if it really gets strong in the next couple of days, who knows, maybe it gets to the 260 area. So keep an eye on that. There was a call buyer earlier in the week who bet $6.7 million. I believe it was on the August 260 calls. Please double check that, but I, if my recollection is right, uh, there was a big buyer there. So it could extend into the 260 level, obviously, uh, in the course of time. Uh, let me give you guys some other ideas that I kind of like here. Let me see what else I want to, I want to share with you guys. Oh, speaking of Boom, right? So I like Boom. I think Boom looks good. Uh, it got rejected on the 50-day moving average. If it could just reclaim this 77 area, you do have room to 69 and change. Uh, 70, that looks good. Uh, Twitter actually looks pretty good. Okay, Twitter looks good as well. Um, watch Twitter as well. If it could reclaim, you know, if it could reclaim like 38.20, because you can see the linear regression line here is 38.18. If it can start reclaiming on a close 38.20, uh, that can be good as well. Um, I still like ZM. I, I didn't like the way they sold it off, but I still like it. I think if it could reclaim 95, it looks pretty good. And uh, check out this little stock. Uh, check out this little stock. Um, BCOV looks interesting. Uh, Beacon Roofing, uh, you know, gapped up here. If it starts reclaiming the $11 area, again, I don't think it's going to be a big, big trade. But for all you guys who are swinging stocks, that looks pretty decent. And uh, PRVB trades a little bit thinner. Okay, it trades a little bit thinner, but you guys can see it's coming out of a channel here. If it can start reclaiming, you know, 1210, 1220, you could possibly get an initial move to 1270. Again, is this something that I want? I want to trade? Probably not. Uh, again, my goal game is beta, but again, a chart is a chart is a chart. The faster you embrace technical analysis, the better. The faster you start, stop feeling sorry for yourself the better, and I'm telling you new traders, as right before we, we log off here and enjoy the rest of our uh, weekend festivities, uh, I'm telling you, okay, if you give it enough time and you stop wasting time with an invalid approach or invalid process and just really have that moment of clarity with yourself, look at yourself in the mirror and say, look, there's a better way. Again, it doesn't have to be mine, okay? It doesn't have to be mine. As long as you have yourself, give yourself an opportunity that just really believe that there's an alternative to what you're doing and things actually work, then at least you are extending your shelf life of possibly being a you know, professional trader. So guys, God bless everybody. Again, new traders, don't put a lot of pressure in your time. When your time comes, it will come. Okay, When it does come, you'll really appreciate uh, all the struggles, all the sleepless nights, all the self-doubts. Uh, all the walking across the fire, and it really will be sweet when you finally get to that point uh, that you really are proud of yourself and you really feel uh, a really good energy shift that you are finally in control of your trading. Guys, God bless everybody. I wish you the best. And God's help. I'll see you all in the field of Take care. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. 
you're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.